Hey guys, we are solving one step equations, which means all of these equations can be solved in literally one step. Maybe it's adding on both sides or dividing on both sides or multiplying on both sides. Well, no matter what, all of these equations are just one step equations and I'm gonna show you exactly how to look at them, figure out what operation to use and then solve them. So let's take a look. The first three problems that we have here super simple. It says x plus 7 equals 9. What I always will instruct my students to do in algebra 1 is to look at an equation and ask yourself, what do you have on both sides of your equation? Do you have variables on both sides? In this case, no. I only have a variable on the left side of my equation. And when I say left side, I mean the left side of the equal sign. The equal sign is what separates the left side from the right side. So I have a variable on one side. Do I have numbers on both sides of my equation? The answer is yes. I have a positive 7 and I have a positive 9. So then my next question is always, well, which one of those numbers should I remove? Should I get rid of the 7 or the 9 to get the variable to be by itself? And the answer would be the positive 7 because the positive 7 is on the same side of the equation as my x. So then the next question is, well, what's the opposite operation of adding 7? It's subtracting 7. And so what I will do is I will subtract 7 from the left side of my equation. Notice I lined up my 7s. But in equations, we have to keep them balanced. So whatever you do to one side of the equation, you must do to the other side. So if I subtract 7 on the left, I need to also subtract 7 on the right-hand side of my equation. When we do that, these 7s will simplify each other out because 7 minus 7 is 0. I never need to write 0. And my result is now x equals 2. Easy, easy. Next one, 5 plus x equals negative 3. Same idea. Do I have variables on both sides? No. Do I have numbers? Yes. What are the numbers? A positive 5 and a negative 3. Which number would I need to remove to get the variable x to be by itself? It would be the positive 5. Well, what's the opposite operation of a positive 5? It would be to subtract 5. If I subtract 5 on one side of the equation, I must subtract 5 from the other side of the equation. In this case, 5 minus 5 is 0, and I'm just simply left with x equals negative 3 minus 5 is a negative 8. Next one, 6 equals x plus 8. Do I have variables on both sides? No. Do I have numbers? Yes. I have a 6 and an 8. Which one of those numbers is on the same side of my equation as my variable? It's the positive 8. How do we undo or get rid of a positive 8? We subtract 8. And so if I subtract 8 on the right-hand side of my equation, I must do it on the left-hand side. That way my 8 minus 8 is gone, and 6 minus 8 leaves me with negative 2, and so negative 2 equals x. The next two, x minus 9 equals 1. Do I have variables on both sides? No. Do I have numbers? Yes. A negative 9 and a positive 1. Which number would I need to remove to get the variable x to be by itself? I would have to get rid of this negative 9. Well, how do you get rid of a negative 9? You add 9. And so if I add 9 on the left, I need to add 9 on the right. My 9s will simplify out, and I'm just left with now x equals 10. Next one, I have numbers on both sides, a negative 5, negative 2. Which number is on the same side of the equation as my variable? It's the negative 5. How do we undo a negative 5 or get rid of it? We add 5. If I add 5 on the left-hand side of the equation, I add 5 to the right. And I hope you see at this point, it's very repetitive. The mindset is always the same. Um, and then I end up getting here x equals 3. Last one of this skill. Do I have numbers on both sides? Absolutely. 4 and a negative 7. Which number is on the same side as my variable? The negative 7. How do you undo a negative 7? you add 7. And if I add 7 on the right, I have to add it onto the left, and then I am simply left with 11 equals x. Awesome. Next three. So these next three have a different operation happening. We've talked about this in a previous video. Side by side means to multiply, right? Side by side. So when I see 5x, that means side by side they're multiplying together. The opposite operation of multiplying in this case would be to divide. So if I want to undo 5 being uh, multiplied by x and I want to get x by itself, I need to divide both sides by x. Now we don't use the division symbol, the, 
the bar with the dot on the top and bottom. No, no, no. We remember that division is represented in fraction form in algebra one. So we put division bars on both sides, fraction bars on both sides, and we divide by five. You always divide by the number that's being multiplied by x. It's never the number on the left or the number on the right or the smaller number. That's never the answer. It's always you divide both sides by whatever number is literally touching the variable because it's multiplying by it. And when I divide those out, I'm left with x equals 75 divided by five. Well, I know five times five is 25 and there's three quarters in 75 cents. So five times three would give us 15. So 75 divided by five is x equals 15. Same thing in this next problem. Negative two and x are side by side and we know side by side means to multiply. The opposite operation of undoing the multiplying would be to divide. We always divide both sides of the equation by whatever number is currently being multiplied by x which in this case is the negative two. I then have to do negative 64 divided by negative two. So remember, a negative divided by a negative is a positive. 64 divided by two, what's half of 64? That's easy, 32. Next one, negative 7.5 equals uh, 1.25x. So I know that these are multiplying together. I need to divide both sides by the number that it's being multiplied by. When I do that, my numbers in front of the variable can simplify out. Negative divided by a negative is a positive. 7.5 divided by 1.25 is 6. If you had six sets of $1.25, it would end up being $7.50. I always think about money, especially with decimals and negatives too. Okay, next set. In these next three problems, we see the variable is being divided by a number. So when you're dividing by a number, the way you undo that is you multiply by that number. So here, if I see that X is being divided by four, I'm just gonna move my screen over. If I see X is being divided by four, the way I undo X being divided by four is I multiply both sides by four. Now, the reason for that is if I multiply both sides by four, the four as my big whole number four and my denominator of four, we talked about this in a previous lesson, is that those would end up simplifying each other out because think about it, this big four is really four over one. And so I would be able to cross simplify my fours. That leaves me with just X equals 28, easy. Next one, negative X divided by two equals eight. So if I just multiply both sides by two, I'm gonna still be left with this negative here. And we don't wanna be left with a negative X. We wanna be left with a positive x. So not only do I multiply both sides of this equation by 2, but I also multiply it by a negative. And the reason for that is, think about it, a negative times a negative is a, again, positive. And then these twos would simplify each other out beautifully. And with that being said, then I'm left with that nice positive x. If I multiply the right hand side by negative 2, 8 times negative 2, I get negative 16. Last one here, negative x divided by nine equals negative three. Same idea, the fraction is negative. If I multiply both sides by nine, I'll still be left with a negative x, but I don't want negative x, I want just positive x. So the way we take care of that is we multiply both sides by a negative nine. A negative times a negative is a positive. So here, a nine, my nines would simplify out. My negative times a negative is a positive x. That's what I'm left with on the right-hand side. Negative nine times negative three, a negative times a negative is another positive, and I'm left with positive 27. Okay, last three. Okay, so this is the case now when you have a fraction being multiplied by a variable. And you technically can do these in two steps. I like to do them in one step. I like to teach my students that, hey, when you have a fraction being multiplied by a variable, the way we undo it is we use that multiplicative inverse. I talked about that in the number properties video. The multiplicative inverse is when you take a fraction or any numerical value really, and you do the reciprocal of it. So when you multiply any number by its reciprocal, the result is always one. And the reason why that's helpful is if I multiply both sides of these equations by the reciprocal, the multiplicative inverse of the number that's being multiplied by X, I'll be left with just one X. And I don't even have to write one X, it's just X. 
So here, if I have three fourths being multiplied by X and I want to undo the three fourths in one shot, I simply multiply it by the reciprocal of four thirds. Now, if I do that on the left-hand side of the equation, I have to do it on the right, correct? But now here's the beauty of it. The whole point of this is, is that the fours will cross simplify and the threes will cross simplify. And look what you're left with. You're just left with X. Perfect. Now I multiply over here, seven times four thirds. We talked about this also. When you do seven times four thirds, that seven is really seven over one. I would do seven times four is 28. And so my answer is 28 thirds. That's it. Last two. Negative one half x equals eight. So if I have a fraction, I want to multiply it by the reciprocal. Now, when the fraction's negative, your reciprocal also needs to be negative. So the reciprocal of one half is two over one, and then I need to make it negative. So it would be negative two over one. If I multiply the left hand side by negative two over one, I have to multiply the right hand side by negative two over one. Here's where the beauty, the magic happens. These two simplify out, the ones would cross simplify out. A negative times a negative is a positive, and then 8 times negative 2 is just negative 16. Done and done. Last one, negative 5 equals negative 2 ninths times x. I do the reciprocal of negative 2 ninths, which is negative 9 over 2. I multiply the left-hand side by that as well. Again, here's the beauty. The whole point of multiplying by the reciprocal is that the 2s cross-simplify, the 9s cross-simplify, a negative times a negative leaves me with a nice positive, sorry guys, a nice positive x over on the right, and then negative 9 halves times negative 5, a negative times a negative is a positive, so it's positive 45 over 2. That's it. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it helps. Bye.